In the 9th century, during the Tang Dynasty, China's top alchemists were fixated on discovering the formula for the mythical elixir of life. At one point during their experiments, they created a powder, black in color, which flared up violently when lit, bursting into a cloud of smoke and flames. The combination of ingredients used were saltpeter, sulfur, and charcoal, traditionally made from willow trees. This powder was originally used for fireworks and signals. However, this new technology found another use. Later records show it was used in rockets for war in the year 1232 during the Battle of Kai Kang. This so-called black powder spread across Asia like wildfire. It made its way to Europe sometime between 1240 and 1280. By the end of the 14th century, firearm technology became popularized in most of Eurasia, replacing the ballista, aka gone-isled, often shortened, to gun. This led to it being coined gunpowder. While gunpowder was effective for small model rockets, short-ranged weapons, and, as is still the case today, fireworks, for launching payloads and more importantly people, the human race would need to find a better alternative for rocket fuel. On March 16, 1926, Robert H. Goddard, an American professor and physicist, was testing what could be considered the most notable innovation in rocket science. He was testing a liquid propellant rocket where gasoline, yes, gasoline, is pumped into a combustion chamber along with liquid oxygen and then ignited to produce far more thrust than gunpowder. Focusing the exhaust downwards through a nozzle generates the upward force on the rocket, allowing it to fly. The rocket he tested, dubbed Nell, rose an unamusing 41 feet, and was only in the air for 2.5 seconds. However, the details don't matter, as this was the first successful liquid rocket flight, paving the way for a new era of space exploration. Dwight D. Eisenhower's press secretary announced on July 29, 1955, that they intended to launch the first artificial satellite during the IGY. It would take the USSR only a month to respond, on August 2nd of the same year, the USSR responded, saying that they would be the ones to launch the first artificial satellite into space. However, this wasn't just some fun challenge between two countries. This was the biggest scientific race between two global superpowers in all of history. This is what ignited the space race. The USSR made the first major advancement of the space race by launching the first artificial satellite called Sputnik. Sputnik was a 180-pound, beach-ball-sized metal sphere with four radio antennas protruding from it. It orbited 950 kilometers above the Earth and reached speeds of 29,000 kilometers an hour, making a complete circle of the globe every 100 minutes. Sputnik sent out radio broadcasts for three weeks before the zinc batteries died. However, it was in low Earth orbit for a total of three months, before its orbit decayed and it burnt up re-entering the atmosphere. The first victory claimed by the USSR was not just a small victory. People of the Western world assumed America's technological superiority, and thought that the technology gap between America and the USSR would make this race easy. But this satellite put the perceived technological gap into question. This became known as the Sputnik Crisis, and was a major slap in the face to America. Before the US could even respond, the Soviets sent up a second satellite just a month later, the Sputnik 2 this time carrying a dog named Laika, claiming the title of the first nation to send a living creature into space. Unfortunately, she died of overheating and panic on re-entry. Her murder caused protests about animal cruelty and the science industry, and in 2008, the USSR built a monument honoring her. With this second major achievement, the US was made to be the underdog of the space race. On January 31st, 1958, Almost four months after Sputnik 1 launched, the US finally launched their satellite, dubbed Explorer 1. They launched it into orbit using a modified descendant of the V-2 rocket from World War II German technology. Explorer was the first satellite to carry scientific equipment. In fact, it led to the discovery of the Van Allen belt in the same year. It faced the same fate as both the Sputnik satellites. However, it lasted in orbit for 12 years before inevitably burning up in the atmosphere. Later in the year, on the 1st of October, the US federal government established the National Aeronautics and Space Administration. 
And not even a week later, Administrator T. Keith Glennon announced the agency's manned spaceflight program, Project Mercury. This was a project to send humans to space and laid the groundwork for the future Apollo missions. The first milestone from Project Mercury was launching and later recovering primates into space. The names of the two monkeys were Abel and Baker. The first great ape launched just two and a half years later, Ham, a chimpanzee, on October 31st, 1961, who also survived his trip. The speed of progress of the space race makes it stand out in the field of technological races. The human race went from suggesting sending an inanimate object on a one-way trip into orbit, to sending and bringing back a living being from orbit safely in less than four years. But they weren't done there. The Explorer 6 was another satellite launched by the US. It was able to take pictures, and took the first picture of Earth from orbit. And the picture was, well, abstract, shall we say. But this was another major milestone of the space race, and space photography, as this could be called the great-great-grandfather of the great astrophotography satellites like the Hubble Telescope and the James Webb Telescope. But the next milestone was one of the greatest in human history. Yuri Gagarin of the USSR was the first person to ever reach space. On April 12, 1961, he completed one full orbit around the Earth that lasted 108 minutes aboard the Vostok 1. Again, the Soviets claimed a major victory before the US. But the US was not far behind. In under a month, Alan Shepard became the second person and the first American to reach space. Aboard the Freedom 7 rocket, a very American name, he completed the first crewed Mercury mission. For obvious reasons, the US didn't want second place to every major milestone of the space race. To prove their technological dominance, they had to do something unbelievable. So unbelievable, that some people still don't believe it to this day. Now it is time to take longer strides. Time for a great new American enterprise. Time for this nation to take a clearly leading role in space achievement. I therefore ask the Congress, above and beyond the increases I have earlier requested for space activities, to provide the funds which are needed to meet the following national goals. First, I believe that this nation should commit itself to achieving the goal before this decade is out of landing a man on the moon and returning him safely to the Earth. No single space project in this period will be more impressive to mankind or more important for the long-range exploration of space, and none will be so difficult or expensive to accomplish. Next stop, the moon. The world was captivated and waited eagerly to see if such a feat could be pulled off. The USSR in America only just sent somebody to orbit briefly, and now they want to send a crew on a trip that would take over a week to accomplish? Both sides will need some major advancements to pull this off. And that's just what they did. To land and walk on the moon, you need to be, well, outside the spacecraft. So naturally, the next step technologically is to learn how to sustain people in space with a spacesuit or extravehicular mobility unit, as NASA called it. But they weren't the first of this milestone either. The Soviets beat them by two and a half months, with Alexei Leonov performing the first spacewalk on March 18, 1965, while tethered to the Vostok 2 orbiter. Only on June 3, 1965, did Ed White perform the first American spacewalk. Luna, the moon, is Earth's biggest natural satellite, with a diameter of 3,500 kilometers and a mass large enough to create the tides on Earth. It's roughly 400,000 kilometers away from Earth, a little more than the 200 kilometer altitude of most satellites at the time. This means a long travel time for both getting there and back. So to prepare for such a feat, between August 21st and August 29th of 1965, Gordon Cooper and Pete Conrad spent one full week in space during the Gemini 5 mission, a major victory for the US indeed. However, a year later, the USSR made its first orbit around the moon using the Luna 10, an unmanned spacecraft. 
This was also the first man-made satellite to orbit a body outside of Earth, again taking the lead from the United States, who were again two months behind. But this time, they struck back harder than they were hit. NASA pulled off the first soft landing on the moon with the Surveyor 1 lunar lander. Great, now just do it with humans. Unfortunately, that's simpler said than done. 1967 was a disastrous year for both participants of the space race. NASA, now feeling confident, started a new set of missions, called the Apollo missions, named after the Greek god of light and music. However, the very first mission, Apollo 1, was a disaster. Command pilot Gus Grissom, senior pilot Ed White, and pilot Roger B. Chaffee all perished as a momentary increase in voltage caused a fire in the cockpit. A national tragedy that won't ever be forgotten in the history of spaceflight. The Soviet Union had a disaster of its own when three pilots were killed in the Soyuz 11 as the cabin depressurized during re-entry, causing all crew members to die of asphyxiation. But only through perseverance has the human race come as far as it has. And so, it wasn't over there. Eisenhower became the first voice beamed down from space, as his pre-recorded message was broadcast from the SCORE satellite back down to the nation. During NASA's Apollo 8 mission, three pilots successfully orbited the moon, clearing the way for a landing mission. Three brave pilots set off to conquer land on a previously thought impossible mission. In approximately three days, pilots Neil Armstrong, Buzz Aldrin, and Michael Collins will reach the moon and begin landing. In the meantime, they sit in their tin can drifting through space, praying nothing goes wrong along the way. Just over three days later, they enter the moon's orbit, and after waiting for the right opportunity, with their goal in sight, they start to descend. After four days, six hours, and 49 minutes of drifting through the void, contact was made with the lunar surface. There are many candidates for the most impressive feat of humanity. Maybe building the pyramids, maybe the invention of the transistor. Whatever you say, the landing on another celestial body will forever be near the top. At this point, it's said the United States has claimed victory in the space race with this winner-takes-all moon landing mission. The space race may have concluded with the moon landing, but many more major advancements have occurred since then. For example, the Russians made the first experimental space station called the Salyut-1. Mars rovers have landed and begun surveying the planet by taking pictures and rock samples and sending them back to scientists on Earth. And Voyager 1, while hurtling through space, looked back and took one final photo of home. A picture called the Pale Blue Dot, with a family portrait showing just how alone we are in this vast, empty void. <laughs> 